Okay guys, um, so here is a picture from the collage and I added a few pictures from a view from the top, just a couple, that and those two. So they're pretty good high quality images. Another side shot, they're, they're clearer. They're smaller, but they are clearer and her hair actually in this in this picture in this picture pretty well match the the bangs that i imagine on stupid girl so with that being said i just decided i was going to sketch out this and it's not it's not spot on or anything i think her cheek should be farther out. Actually, let's see if I can go ahead and change this. So this is my ink layer. Let's call it ink. And I guess I am gonna try just to kind of match it a little bit better. It's not gonna be It's not going to be quote unquote perfect. Now they don't, her cheek doesn't jut out a lot, but the point with this is that even if it doesn't look spot on, like it doesn't look like Stacy. And I, I increased the size of the eyes, so this this line over here is a little bit on the thick side. Not that it really matters, but again, as you can see, I think it's not too bad. It's not perfect, but it's not too bad. I think even her, her nose might even be, it should be a little bit on, whoa, maybe not like that, but seems like it is a little bit on the small side in my drawing. Maybe I could do something like that. Ah, was it better before? Probably somewhere in between. Let's try to change it again. I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer under the ink and I'm going to call this mask. I do just find it, it, it it's nice to be able to have a mask. It's just for selection purposes. This is not necessary. You don't have to do this. But I do like it. I do think it makes things easier when later on you just want to add a few things here or there. You want to adjust something ever so slightly. As with anything, the more careful you are, the better the result is going to be. I do want this to be relatively fine-tuned. It doesn't need to be perfect. I do, and I'm not, as you can see, I am not interested at all in making this color representative of what it would look like in its colored form. There's nothing red about her hair. There's nothing yellow about her shirt. And there's nothing purple or blue or whatever color I choose, orange, 
about her skin. And this doesn't have to be perfect. You can easily come back in here at the end and clean it up. You can clean it up by by any layer you want. You can because it's 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 for the most part it's pretty non-destructive, so you can come back in here after the fact and play around and figure out which layer can be adjusted or which layer caused something that you didn't like. So here is the mask. And now I'm going to do the base. So I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to call it B-A-S-E. And even though this is Stacy Dash, she's not exactly a white girl, I am going to fill her skin this way. I'm going to make her hair blonde. And I use these swatches. It just makes things easier for me when it comes time to choose colors and it's for consistency. All right, so all of that was on the wrong layer. Bummer. That's the one thing I think you need to keep in mind and try to keep keep in the front of your mind is is to use the right layer when you're doing this because you're constantly going back and forth between these two layers and it's really easy as you saw I did to get confused and not really pay attention and then you fill I just think blue is overused I think too many characters too many superheroes have blue eyes and it's just overplayed And then the last thing to do would be her shirt. I'll do pink. Lay it in here. So this is where I'm going to start with the with the base and the masks. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to Add a multiply layer. I just call it dark. You can call it whatever you want. And I have gray 50 and gray 25. Generally, I use 25. And I'm going to use this. I'm going to come in here. And I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to match it exactly but it is nice to have reference because now I can see where where it's actually going to to be light and dark so this part I can't see under her under her under her um, up in this area because she has too much 90s hair going on, but you can still see. You can still see what it looks like, and, and you can always use your artistic freedom to put it wherever you want. I mean, it's your call. But as I said, this is this is really non-destructive. So this stuff is all on a separate layer. Now, when I've in the past, when I've done my 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 work, I don't I don't use character. I don't use actor reference or these reference sheets, but 
I am finding that it's it's pretty helpful. It's really useful, to be honest. Because now I know it's like 3D modeling without reference. Sure, you can do it. If you just want to imagine what a car looks like, but they're going to use image planes and they're going to bring in line art. They're going to bring in blueprints or whatever kind of reference they can use. So as a when you're coloring, you're definitely going to be doing a lot of things just from your own artistic brain. You're not going to be using reference for every single thing, but if I get a good a good reference library going, and as I mentioned, Stacy Dash hasn't really been in a ton of movies. I I I kind of browse through or scan through a view from the top and I didn't, I mean, the, these three pictures are about all I could find. If I wanted to take my time, I could probably find more, but I'm not, that's, I'm not, that's, I mean, I, uh, no, I'll look for something else. I'll look for another movie, maybe something that she has a more prominent role in. I know Clueless is obviously kind of what everybody knows her for, but I mean, I could use Clueless, except the thing is, is that it's an older movie. It's like, at least this one, the quality is good. It was, it was, and it's a little bit more modern. I could look for some newscasts, but, or some like YouTube videos. I just worry about the quality and then I'm not gonna really find what I'm looking for. Again, it doesn't need to look exactly like her. That's not the, that's not the, the point. The point is that it's relatively consistent. So even if it doesn't look just like her, which it doesn't, now I can go back to masks and I can select only that. And now I'm going to get the airbrush, make it larger. And so again, it's not so that this looks like the actor. I do this so... For example, Stupid Girl and Becky don't look the same with just different hairstyles. And we'll go back to masks. So again, I'm just using the gray 25 and this, you don't need to be changing colors all the time. You have a base and then you have, you're just working in grayscale after that. So it's pretty convenient. It's a nice way to work. The next thing I'll do is I will add a screen layer and I'll call it screen. Just, sometimes I call it light. Actually, I, I guess I call it light. It's just the way I like to name things. The only thing with a light is that there is a lighten layer, but I know, and I always on a mask, I don't use a mask with the dark, but I use a, a mask with all of the light layers. So again, we can go back here, select things, and then I can go to yellow. And it's on screen.
And now I'll go back to this, this one, make it a little bit smaller. With the black, I'm gonna paint, base, basically paint out. So I go, kind of like, go around it like this. But because it's a smaller shape, a lot of the times I'll, I'll start to ba basically simplify it, so to speak. Because now it's, a, it's like a smaller area, so I'm not trying to exactly keep the exact shape that I had before. Something like this. And we'll see, we'll see how we like it. And we can do the same thing with the lips, something like that. Something like with the eyes, I guess, I could just put some little lights in here. And I'm not gonna go in, zoom in, and use the mask. Like, it's just not worth it, so I'll just, not cheat it's just I don't need to I don't feel like I need to be so super super careful again we're using the same ones that we've used before just at this point just the gray 25 so I'm gonna come in here give it a little bit more something after this I like to add a what I call a highlight. So this is going to be screen again, add a mask. And because I have a actual mask, it's pretty easy. So I'm going to go in here with the regular pen tool now because these are highlights. So something like that. We can do, we can play around with it. It's not an exact science, or maybe it is, and I just don't know it. But I kind of like to do just sort of what I think would look good there. I think that's pretty good. Now we can go to the airbrush with the black and a larger brush and we can kind of paint back out what we don't need because it is a highlight and at the same time I do want her nose to be brighter. I'm just tapping it a little bit to bring back some of it. And I guess I don't like it so much, so let's fade it back in. The same thing would, would happen with, and I'm using yellow here because I just, for, if there's no, because if there's nothing, oh, I'm on the airbrush. Because if there's nothing that says otherwise, I think having yellow is a pretty good sun or a warm kind of lamp, a yellow lamp, for example. So, you know, and I'm going to get rid of this. I, I know I feel like it's right here, but I'm just not going to deal with it in the artwork. I'm going to add yet another 
I'm going to call it screen once again, and I'm going to call this bounce. And this one right here is, I feel like it's a little bit purple, which looks pretty awesome to me. Yellow and purple are opposites, so on the color wheel, it's pretty easy where you can get a complementary effect with the purple bounce light and the warm primary light. So now that I've got that layer, I'm going to go back to the mask layer and I'm going to choose the purple airbrush. Now, because I use an airbrush for the for the light side, I'm using an airbrush again for the bounce side. I can make it a little bit bigger, move it a little bit over, and do something like that. Go back to here. And you can see she's got this cheekbone here, which is which is one of the reasons I think she has such good features. People love those cheekbones, and why not? They look great. So but yeah, you know, you just you just kind of and then you can paint out what you don't want, maybe under the ears, maybe down in here. I like to come over here and kind of give a, a little lift to these stray hairs. And similar to what we did before, I'm kind of following what I see as and if I don't like this, I can go to white and I can just paint it right back to what I originally had. So it's not completely undestructive, but it's pretty good. It's pretty non-destructive. And I'm basically, uh, I guess in here I could add a little bit. more in here. I could. I don't know if I I don't know if that's really correct. And I am going to do this. Now it's basically finished. I don't like to add highlights on the on the bounce light because bounce light is cooler, not cooler, bounce light is, well, it's usually cooler, but bounce light is softer. It's usually not as intense because it's a secondary light. Another thing that we could do is like, let's say we wanted this to not be purple. Well, we could go to here, this is adjustments, and we could do something like a color balance. Now when you get a color balance, if you don't change anything, it's going to change everything. And like that looks pretty cool. But we're not going to do that. We are going to select this, which is going to stick it to just the layer below. So now if we see how it's only changing the highlight or the bounce could do something like and that's on mid-tone so we could go in here and change all of it now we're not getting We're not getting exactly a green tone, so if we know we wanted green, it would have been it would have been better from the start. 
just to select a green color. So, you know, I have green, a pink, purple, blue. Those are pretty much going to work. I mean, usually purple, blue, purple and blue are going to be excellent for bounce lights. Occasionally there could be something else. I do have, as you can see, red or pink. But then the other thing we could do is under the base color, we could add another layer and I would go down to color and then you could do something like fill it and you can see even in in this kind of a color it looks pretty cool you could see a case where this would be the way it's actually colored maybe she's in a a, a boiler room or maybe it's some kind of a maybe she's running down a street at night and you just want to give it this sort of kind of a creepy, eerie, green kind of feel. But I would use it more to reduce it down to like something like this. And then, so what you would see is there's the original. Here's something a little bit more moody. And you could still keep it like this. You could keep it like this. You have a lot of different options. and Or let's say it's blue could make it look like this, or it's red, could make it look like, well, red's pretty close to normal state. So, you know, I think blue looks really cool, and you can always change the opacity. Green looks pretty cool. Well, I think blue looks the best. I do like blue the best. Anyway, guys, that's how I would be coloring this, and even though it doesn't look like her, I think you can definitely tell it has features of her and hopefully this is going to help me give the character a look that is more consistent throughout the book. Have fun with it. I hope this was useful. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you think this channel is beneficial, you like the content, it's somewhat entertaining, please consider subscribing and leave a comment. I would love to know your thoughts. If you have other ideas, if you think I could do something better, if you picked up something positive from this, let me know. I'd love to hear it all. And uh, that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot. Bye.